When it comes to gaming, ultra widescreen monitors have always been a favourite of mine. After all, the difference in aspect ratio between a standard widescreen and an ultra wide is pretty significant. Many long time viewers of this channel will likely be aware that I use ultra wides wherever and whenever I can. And although in recent times I've moved my video content to a more standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio, when it comes to my own use, I'm a firm believer in a 21 by 9 monitor. In fact, as you will see, my main setup actually has three monitors of these dimensions. This then is the BenQ Mobius EX3450R. As soon as I saw the box, it was clear that the monitor was going to be large, and at 34 inches, it certainly offers a load of screen estate. Now, this isn't a cheap monitor by any means. In fact, at around £900 in the UK, this is very much a premium monitor. So, if you're thinking of spending that type of money on a monitor, it's only right that you check out a number of reviews online. As this video will be focusing on the experience of using the monitor with Microsoft Flight Simulator and other games, I've gone ahead and included some tech-focused reviews on this monitor in the video description, so do make sure you go and check them out and factor them into any decision that you actually make about this monitor. So BenQ sent this monitor for review a few weeks ago, and since then I've been putting it through some pretty heavy paces. That's both for simming, gaming, as well as editing. Now, the setup here is where I do a lot of my gaming. It's also where I edit my videos. The main monitor is the new BenQ. I have another 21x9 monitor held in place by an arm at the top, and usually I have another 21x9 to the right, although I've had to remove it for this video as it kept casting unsightly shadows during the capture. This is how the setup usually looks though. The BenQ monitor has a very solid build to it. The stand is of great quality and allows a pretty good range of motion. The resolution of the panel itself is 3440 by 1440 and with a screen size of 34 inches, this resolution is definitely needed to help maintain sharpness of image. Color rendition is also very nice, although some people may find it a little flat or washed out on the default settings. However, it is possible to use the monitor's HDRI button, which will allow you to cycle through some presets of uh, brightness and coloration, and these very quickly overcome any washed out looks from the default settings. Okay, so I don't want to go too much more into technical aspects of this monitor. As I said near the beginning of the video, I highly recommend you go check out the reviews from Tom's Hardware and the other review sites to so go and get all the tech details. What I really want to do here is to talk about what this monitor is like with Microsoft Flight Simulator. One thing that most people will be aware of is that Flight Simulator is a beautiful looking game, and the BenQ Mobius really does accentuate this. This was true, whether I was flying through clouds at sunset or flying over forests at midday. As you can see, I sit fairly close to the monitor, and the size of the screen goes a long way to pulling me into the sim. Whilst 34 inch ultra wide monitors can be found on the cheaper end of the spectrum nowadays, in fact I have one of those, few if any of the cheaper ones have the colour reproduction quality of this monitor. If I had to point out one thing from this monitor that stood out to me head and shoulders above other monitors I've used, I'd definitely say it was the colour. And this one thing on its own made the massive difference to my flight experience. The monitor is certified as HCR400, which means I could use Flight Simulator in HDR10, and I'm sure that accounted for a lot of this. So yes, this was one aspect that was very impressive to me. Overall then, the monitor has certainly improved my experience with Microsoft Flight Simulator. But that is far from the only thing I've been using the monitor for. I've also been using it for general gaming as well as working with editing my videos. Now, when it comes to editing with this particular monitor with desktop applications, the X3415R doesn't really offer anything that a regular 34-inch widescreen monitor wouldn't also offer. That said, and to be perfectly fair here, if video work or photography or any other imagery work, so uh, colour calibration is important to you, then again, do check out those tech reviews I linked below because they'll show you that colour calibration here is oh, very, very good. Now, no testing out of hardware would be complete for me without also trying it with Elite Dangerous. As I mentioned early on, many long-time viewers of this channel will remember my early Elite Dangerous content where everything was filmed in the 21x9 aspect ratio. And, well, this monitor really does bring back the memories for that. And whilst you'll certainly get some lens distortion here, especially when you're orbiting planets, 
I really do think that Elite Dangerous is right at home at this aspect ratio. Now, the game doesn't have any HDR support, it doesn't have any HDR options, but nonetheless, the black reproduction with this monitor does certainly help when you're out in the depths of space. The blacks really are very, very black indeed. That said, if you spend a bit of time experimenting with the various colour presets that we can see here, you may find that some of the dark areas, especially noticeable in Elite Dangerous because so much of it is black and in space, you may notice that some of those dark areas actually suffer for a little, from a little bit of a colour crushing. Either way, all of these presets, as well as the on-screen UI, are all very easy to access thanks to the addition of a remote. There's also a little joystick underneath the monitor that you can use to toggle through the menus as well. And very briefly touched on the curvature of the monitor here, I just want to give you a bit of an idea of the curve. So, certainly not full wraparound, but definitely enough to give you some extra immersion. One thing that wasn't particularly relevant for Microsoft Flight Simulator is the refresh rate of this monitor. It can run up to 144Hz, which means that you can successfully and cleanly run at 144 frames per second. Not something you're going to be able to achieve in Microsoft Flight Simulator anytime soon, but something that works extremely well when it comes to many other games out there. The monitor also has a fast 1 millisecond response time, although I'd suggest you check out the tech reviews for in-depth analysis on that. Audio reproduction is also pretty neat, as far as monitors go at least. BenQ try and make a big deal about this, and to be honest, the sound is pretty good, including stereo speakers and an additional one for improved bass. Whilst BenQ like to use their marketing speak for this aspect of the monitor, calling it Trivolo, it certainly won't be replacing any external audio setup anytime soon. But nonetheless, it's definitely one of those nice-to-haves. In the end then, have been very impressed with the monitor, but do I recommend it? Well, there's a very big catch here, and that's the price. I find it very hard to recommend a monitor at this price point. On the one hand, if you are already looking to spend between £800 and £1,000 on a monitor, then I definitely suggest you add this one into your list of options. It's worth taking a closer look at. Yet, if you're on the fence due to the pricing, then definitely look at some other monitors which offer similar features at a lower price. It's not that you would be disappointed with this monitor, I defy anyone to be disappointed with it. Yet, the pricing is a kicker. Sure, this is a premium monitor, and it very much does feel the part, but there are other options out there as well. The BenQ Mobius EX3415R, then, is a fantastic contender for your intention, and at a slightly lower price point, it might be an easy option. For now, though, it's a great monitor that I'm very much enjoying using, but one that comes at a price point that feels a little too high. That then brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.